Hey hello and welcome class to this session. Today we're going to discuss annuities, particularly the ordinary annuity. So on this session, you will be able to first familiarize yourselves with the formulas involving annuities and then solve P when A is given as well as solving F when A is al also given. So we build the relationship by and by. So before we do that, let us have the definition. So annuity is actually a series of equal payments occurring at equal periods. So there are types of annuity. First, we have the ordinary annuity. So this is where payments are made at the end of each period. So when we also have the deferred annuity, is one where the first payment is made several periods after the beginning of the annuity so the first payment is not exactly right after certain peri uh, present period and then annuity due is one where payments are made at the beginning of each period so let us have the notations in our equation by and by first we have p as the value or sum of money at present and F is uh, usually the future worth and then A is the series of periodic equal amounts of money and then N will be number of interest periods similar to what we have, have done in our or the, uh, compound interest as well as the simple interest and then i is the interest rate per interest period so let us derive now the formula if we need to determine the sum amount at the present time given annuity or the annual payments so the cash flow diagram looks like this we're in a will be distributed all over n n is the desired period so first this time we are going to uh, derive the present worth of course all of those annual payment will be brought to the present time because that will be our concern so for the first payment it will be brought to the time so we'll just apply the notation we multiply A with finding P given F, I percent at 1, and then finding A or A times finding P given F at I percent 2. And then similarly for the third year, the fourth year, and the period before the last period, and of course the last period so all of which will be brought to the present with the notation or just applying your compound interest formula wherein finding p given f i percent n and this is a notation called single payment present worth factor so yeah, so we'll just have to sum all of those notations. And then these are the sum. Okay. So that we will utilize the formula or the single payment present word factor, which is y 1 plus i raised to negative n. So each of the period will have its corresponding nth period. So like a times 1 plus i raised to negative 1 plus a times 1 plus i raised to negative 2 until the last period n. So we will just multiply both sides by 1 plus i. So our equation becomes magkakaroon ng 1 plus i on the left hand side and then each 
of the terms 1 plus i will be adding 1 exponent for each of 1 plus i raised to m. So the first term will yield to a times 1 plus i raised to 0. Kasi yung 1 plus i raised to negative 1, mag add yung plus, plus 1. And then 1 plus i raised to 0 is actually equal to 1. So any number that is raised to 0, automatic the value is equal to 1. So that is why ang may iwan dun sa first term is just a. And then each of the 1 plus i raised to raised to negative n of each of the succeeding terms from the first term will be reduced or will will have an addition of one exponent for that one plus i raised to negative n so until for the last for the last term okay we can see that the last term on that is one plus i raised to negative n because we will just add one so becomes negative n plus 1 is the exponent of that last term. And then we less the original equation. And then from this equation, of course, we deduct the original equation coming from that expression so that we can cancel all, all of those on the, the first equation. Yan, yan yung pares. So what is left is we have to deal also with the left hand equation wherein we distribute p to the 1 plus i on the on the first equation on the top equation so we will have p plus pi and then we'll just deduct p on the second equation so we equate that to a minus so this will come will be coming from the second equation. We have a times one plus i raised to negative n. Okay, so that we can cancel p there. So what is left is p i is equal to a minus a times one plus i raised to negative n. So we can uh, bring out a to the right hand equation. So what is left inside the bracket is equal to 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative m. So from that, we just divide both sides by i to eliminate or to isolate p on the left hand side of the equation. We will be having this expression. So the present work in terms of a is equal, is equal to that equation. So a times that factor. And that factor is what we call uniform series present worth factor. So that that is the factor 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative n all over i. So in short, if we want the present worth, we'll just have to multiply the annuity to that uniform series present worth factor which is equal to 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative n all over i. And then for annuity wherein we are concerned with the future worth or the sum of the future. So again, there will be equal payments on each period. So notice that a occurs right after zero for the present word or year zero. So there will be no annuity at year zero. So this is just to reiterate that in ordinary annuity, the payments are made at the end of each period. So year zero is the, the beginning of the period and the end of year zero's period is 1. So that is why we do not have an annuity for year 
0. Again, this is ordinary annuity. Ordinary annuity, the payments occurs the end of each period. So, going back to this, we find F given A. So, we're going to utilize the future time to solve for our future work. So, again, each of these terms will be brought to the future. We will just have to apply our notations from compound interest. Okay, so first, for the first year, we multiply A, and then find the F given A at I percent 1. And then we have And then for the third period, we have A times finding F, I percent 3. So similarly for the fourth and the period before the N, of course we do not have a notation for the annuity at the last period, but we will just have to add that one. So that is why all of those terms will be summed to the future including the A which occurred at the end period. So notice that the last term A do not have any notation because it is occurring exactly at, at the future. So we'll just have to add that A there. And then uh, this equation will be further expanded into its formula. The notation F given PI percent N is actually 1 plus I raised to positive N. So with that, notice that each of the terms of the period will have the notations except for the last period. Again, the last period belongs to the future word. That is why that is just added. So, with this, we multiply both sides by 1 plus i. Okay. So, what happened is uh, we will have 1 plus i to the left-hand side. And then 1 plus i will be incorporated to the 1 plus i terms of each of those terms okay and then less the original equation so we less the original equation here okay coming from that so this will be cancelled and then also that one okay this and that so what is left is again we expand the top equation so we distribute f with 1 plus i then becomes f plus f i and then we deduct the bottom equation it is f on the left hand side and then we do that as well for the left or the right hand side so what is left on top is a times 1 plus i raised to n and then what will be deducted is that term, that last term on the second equation. Okay, so we can cancel F here. So we arrive at that equation. Fi is equal to A times 1 plus I raised to N minus A. So we bring out A on the right hand side equation. And then divide both sides by I. Now this will be our future word in terms of A with that notation equating to 1 plus I raised to N minus 1 all over I. And that factor is actually uniform series compound amount factor with the notation F given A I percent N with that notation 1 plus I raised to N minus 1 all over I. Okay, 
So, from uniform series compound amount factor that, okay, we can solve for A. We will just reciprocate your uniform series compound amount factor. And that factor is what we call the sinking fund factor. So, with a notation, A given F I percent N. So, similarly, from the uniform series present word factor, okay, so we'll just have to solve for A, and of course, the uniform series present word factor will be reciprocate, reciprocated, so we have I all over 1 minus 1 plus I raised to negative N. So, this is what we call the capital recovery factor with that notation finding a given p i percent n so this sinking fund factor if we add i there becomes that expression so first we'll find the lcd and the lcd is 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 Okay, so we divide that on the first term. So what is left on the first term is actually that. So we simply cancel that. And then multiply this by 1. Okay. And uh, that 1 is... Uh, Express into 1 plus i raised to negative n all over 1 plus i raised to negative n. So, we'll just have to distribute that on the equation. Okay. So, here, what happened is that... Uh, The exponent here is just added to the 1 plus i raised to negative n multiplied by 1 plus i raised to n. So what will happen is that the expression 1 plus i raised to 0 will yield to, to 1. Okay. And then it will become this expression. Hence... It is evident that that expression is actually the capital recovery factor. So, summing up those ones, we can say that the sinking fund factor, which is this notation, we just add I there, okay, will equate to this expression, which is the capital recovery factor. So, therefore, sinking fund factor with the notation A given PI percent N plus I is equal to capital recovery factor. So, that is the relationship of the sinking fund factor to that capital recovery factor. So, we'll just have to add an interest rate to sinking fund factor to make it a capital recovery factor. Factor. So, let us put all of those principles into examples. So, first, ordinary annuity problem. What are the present worth and the accumulated amount of a 10-year annuity paying 10,000 pesos at the end of each year with interest at 15% compounded annually? So, what will be the present worth if you are paying 10,000 in an annual basis so annual basis and take note this a coincidence that we have a compounded annually okay so it coincided our rate of interest or the compounding of our rate of interest is coinciding with that payment 
intervals. Okay, so yung payment interval mo is annual. So, nagkataon na yung compounding is also occurring annually. So, there will be a series of payment after or after year 0 up to the 10th year. So, this is an ordinary annuity where the payment are made at the end of the period. So, it does not mention in the problem though but our assumption is that in every problem when it is not specifically stated the occurrence of payment we'll just assume that as ordinary annuity so the assumption is the payments are made at the end of each period so this time we are concerned with the present worth of all of this equal payment so basically we'll bring those a to the present time by applying what we have uh, discussed wherein a will just be multiplied by the notation p given a 15 percent 10 periods so, with that, the present word will just be equal to A times finding P given A, 15%, 10. So, this is actually a notation of uniform series present word factor. So, applying the formula, we have 10,000 times 1 minus 1 plus I raised to negative N all over I. So, we'll just sub to substitute 0. 0.15. Okay. So, we do not need to divide that by any divisor, yung 0. 0.15, because annually lang naman tayo. So, therefore, the present word would be yield to 50,187.69. So, what about our future word with the same equal payments under the same conditions? By the way, A here is equal to 10,000. So, we are concerned with the future word. So, we are going to bring that to the future by uh, applying that notation. A times finding F given A 15% at 10 periods. So, again, we apply the notation. Just apply the formula. And uh, substitute the formula of uniform series compound amount factor. So we have now 1 plus 0.15 raised to 10 minus 1 all over 0.15 multiplied by the annuity 10,000 pesos. So uh, those annuities will accumulate in the future with the amount of 203,037.18 pesos. Okay, moving on to the next problem. So we have here a businessman needs 50,000 pesos for his operations. So one financial institution is willing to lend him money for one year at 12.5% interest rate per annum. So this is discounted. And then another lender is charging 14% with the principal in interest payable at the end one year and then the next financer is willing to lend him 50,000 payable in 12 equally monthly installments of 4,600 pesos so the question here is with those offers what would be the best for him so all of the options will satisfy the businessman needs in uh, acquiring 50,000 but we should have to identify the most feasible choice among those offers. So as a solution, we, we got to compare 
the rate of interest in terms of a common period. Okay? So, let us note or summarize what will be the offer. So, for the first lender A, it is a per annum basis on a discount, discounted rate. So, our remarks there is to maintain that one, we do not need to convert because yung A and B parehas lang naman silang one year basis or per annum basis. So, what is important here is you need to compare the rate of interest in terms of a common period. So, the common period I have chosen here for our convenience is a per annum basis. Because yung C lang naman ang nag to that one year. So, what will be our strategy for C since the basis for interest is a monthly rate of interest, we're going to convert it to annually basis. Remember the process of effective rate of interest? So that will be our strategy. Okay. For lender A, it offers 12% or 12.5% discount for 50,000 pesos. Actually, we have the formula to get the rate of interest given the discount. So, the discount is 0.125, the discount rate. So, we just substitute that in the formula. We, got, we get 14.29%. So, as another solution, an alternate one. Okay, for the first, the present period, madidis uh, we just deduct the interest of 12.5%. So, if we're going to do that, oh, or so we're going to multiply or deduct already the 12.5%, 100%. So, the multiplier is 100% minus 12.5%, that is actually 87.5%. And 0.875 will be multiplied to 50,000, that will be the initial amount at the present time. Okay, so payable in a certain period, 50,000. So therefore, we can now see that if we deduct 50,000 to 43,750, that is, we have an accumulated amount of 66,250. We just divide that by 43,750, just the same we can get 14.29% for that. So lender A, take note, lender A will offer 14.29% effective interest rate for, for a yearly basis. So, what about Lender B? So, Lender B offers 14% rate payable in one year. So, therefore, the rate of interest is 14%. Okay. So, what about the third financer? So, this time, we have an annuity for 50000 will be paid in an annual amount of 4600 so those are equal amounts up to 12 year. So, sorry, 12 periods. Why 12 periods? Because it is a monthly installment. So there will be 12 months in a year. Okay, so that is why the cash flow goes with 12 periods. So this equal payments will just be brought to the present and equate it to 50,000. Okay? So, we do not know yet I percent here. So, I percent here is actually unknown. And then, we will just have to substitute 50,000 on the present word and then the forty. 4,600 pesos 
okay so that expression will yield to 10.867 so notice that um, we we will be having a tri trial and error here and apply interpolation so let us try i is equal to one percent so using that formula okay and just substitute 0 0.01 no and we will yield to an expression 11.255 or to a value of that so we also try here two percent okay so we just substitute two percent in that that expression so we will yield to 10.575 so notice here that your lower limit is 10.575 and the upper limit is 11.255 so why do we say why do we have to deal with upper limit and lower limit so notice that your value on an on an unknown i is equal to 10.867 so we try 1% to 2% range and definitely 10.867 is in between your range of 1 to 2 percent because we have 10.575 up to 11.255 so again 10.575 is the lower limit and 11.255 is the upper limit so when there see by interpolation if we have i of 1 percent it would yield to a certain value of 11.255 and then in a certain 2% we have 10.575 and again we said that 10.869 is actually in between those figures so by interpolation we'll just deduct the upper limit with the lower limit so we have 0.68 and we also deduct the upper limit to the mid value so we have 0.386 we do the same on the left hand side say that is x or the difference between one percent and the unknown i percent and then the upper limit the lower limit we will just have one there okay so basically we'll just have to ratio and proportion it so x has a corresponding difference of point 386 and uh, the difference of 1 will have a corresponding delta of 0 0.68 so by cross multiplication and manipulation we will yield to 0.57 and x in in the figure is actually i percent minus 1 so we substitute the value and then we got 1.57%. Now, 1.57% is not yet the answer because that is based from a monthly installment. Remember that we need to express that rate into a yearly basis. So, how shall, how shall we do that? We use the effective rate of interest. We just substitute I 0 0.0157 raised to 12 because a monthly basis will occur 12 times in a year. Okay, so effective ROI will be equal to 20.56%. So to sum up, we have those figures for lenders A, B, and C. And so far, we need to choose B because B has the lesser interest rate in a year yearly basis okay so moving on to the next problem what is the present worth of 500 pesos deposited at the end of every three months for six years if the interest rate is 12 percent semi-annually so when we say at the end of th every three months of course that will be a quarterly basis so that our n 
is six, is 6 years, which occurs 4 times a year. So, 6 times 4 is equal to 24. So, putting that into the cash flow diagram, so there will be an equal payment of 500 pesos uniformly occurring every semi-annual or quarterly, sorry, every quarterly in 24 periods. Okay. So the present work will be computed here. So we'll just bring that to the present by the notation 500 times finding P given E at I percent on 24 periods. Now, con convert effective ROI from 12% semi-annual to R percent quarterly. No? Kasi ang given dito class is 12% semi-annually. But the condition is a uniform amount which occurs every 3 months. So, hindi magkatugma yung ating rate of interest. So that we need to convert it by effective ROI. So, for effective ROI semi-annual, that will be equating to 1 plus 0.12 all over 2 raised to 2 minus 1. So, for a quarterly basis, we have 1 plus i raised to 4 minus 1. So, 4 because it is occurring 4 times in a year. So, we'll just have to substitute that one and equate with uh, the corresponding effective ROI of a quarterly. And then, we just solve for i. That will be, be equal to 2.96%. So, we are now ready to... Uh, use this formula so it is just it will be just a direct substitution and then we will come up with the present work 8947.14 so why do we need to determine the present work because to know to know the equivalence of those um, equal payments occurring on that period so, moving on to the next problem. So, what are the present worth and the accumulated amount of a 10-year annuity paying 10,000 pesos at the end of each year with interest at 15% compounded annually? So, annually tayo, no? So, for 10 years, there will be a uniform equal amount. Okay. Sorry. So I think uh, the problem should be this one instead of this. Okay. Okay, so for the last problem. We have Tony Starks is to generate a special fund for her daughter by making an equal semi-annual deposits for 20 year period. So, plano niya na gumawa ng funding so that on the last 5 years of the 20 year period so ano ba yung last 5 years? 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. So, for the 16th year dapat yung anak niya makakakuha ng 100,000 pesos onwards up to the 20th year. Okay? So, that is the condition. So, under an, a deposit that will be occurring in a 20-year period also. But, um, this time, he will... Uh, deposit it in a semi-annual basis. Okay. So, with this, for withdrawals, so this is a yearly basis. 
Okay. So first, with the position of the withdrawals, we are going to utilize, for our convenience, ano, we are going to utilize the last five years, putting it into the future. Okay. So because we do not have um, the option to bring the, that to the present okay by this time anyway we, we we have that option but for the meantime we are going to use the most convenient one which is the position of those withdrawals is much convenient to to, to compute for the future work okay so we're going to bring that to the future okay because it is adjacent to the future okay so 100,000 times f given ai percent 5 so we're going to utilize the future work of these withdrawals so fw stands for the future work of the withdrawals okay uh, we need to convert re uh, rate of interest 8% semi-annual kasi 8% semi-annual is the condition the problem but the withdrawals is occurring annually so dapat gamitin mo annually effective rate of interest okay from semi-annual yan yun 1 plus 0 0.08 all over 2 semi-annual kasi we, did, we need to divide it by 2 and it is occurring twice a year okay we equate it to the effective ROI annually. So, well, uh, yeah, we do uh, all of the exponent divisor is equal to 1. So, we just equate the equations to obtain I is equal to 8.16%. So, I think gagamitin mo in calculating the F, the future worth of that withdrawals. 8.16%. So, this is the annual effective rate of interest. So, for deposits, of course, kapalit naman yan. Da, hindi, naman, hindi mo na makukuha yan kung hindi ka nag-deposit in a 40 period. Why 40 period? Because it is 20 years and it is occurring at a semi-annual basis. Okay. So, there will be 40 period. Okay, and then, we compute the future because yung kanina, ang reference line natin dito is the future. Because the basis a while ago for the withdrawals is in the future. Hindi naman pa pwede na yung basis mo. Sa isa is the present and then sa isa is the future. Kailangan, common, common period okay or, or common uh, uh, time okay so everything or the uniform payments will be brought to the future so with the expression a times finding f given a i percent 40 so the f the future of the withdrawal will be equal to F of the deposits. So we'll just have to apply the notation. Say the, the future withdrawal will have an annual withdrawal times that notation finding F given A 8% to and then uh, supposedly that is 5. Ano? So Annuity for the withdrawal times finding F given E at 8.16% all over 2 because it is occurring twice a year and then this is 5. Okay, okay let me correct that 8.16 shouldn't be divided okay because it's already converted into its effective rate of interest 
So the annuity for the deposits will have a notation finding F given A 8% all over 2 on a 40 periods. So for the withdrawal, this is an uh, annual rate of interest we have just computed to be 8.16% for a 5 period. Okay, so for future worth of the deposits, we have A for the deposits of the or the annual or the annuity unknown here or the equal payments for a 40 year 40 periods. Okay, we have also to divide 8% too because it is occurring twice a year. So we just substitute the formula. Okay, ito, uh, wala nang divisor ng 0 0.0816 kasi nga 0 0.0816 or 8.16% was already the effective rate of interest for an annual basis. Okay, and that is 5 times. So we equate that to the AD. So substitute the uh, 8% naging 0 0.04 nan. Okay, 8% all over 2. So we'll come up with 6,193.44. So this is the required. By the way, this is AD. Ano? This is the required uh, annuity to be deposited so that her daughter could avail a funding that will start at the 16th year to provide 100,000 pesos each year starting at the 16th up to the 20th year. Okay, so that's it for the day and the good day everyone and have more practice. Thank you for listening.